So I'm here with Holly Farmer, a former dancer with the Merce Cunningham Dance Company and the current director of the BFA Dance Program at Cal Arts. And with Sarah Mearns, a principal dancer with New York City Ballet and a celebrated guest artist renowned for inhabiting a wide range of work. There is so much more that I could say about both of you and about your stunning careers. But today's conversation is unusually limited in scope. We're coming together to talk about a one and a half minute solo <laughs> from a dance called Loose Time, choreographed by Merce Cunningham in 2002. So Holly, the, sol the solo was choreographed for you 18 years ago. And last year you taught the solo to Sarah, who then danced it at the Brooklyn Academy of Music as part of Night of 100 Solos, a special performance given on the 100th anniversary of Merce Cunningham's birth. So I'm gonna start with you, Holly. Um, you were a member of the Cunningham Company for a long time, from 1997 to 2009. Now this solo came about five years into your time, maybe about, maybe, you know, part like halfway, kind of in the middle of your tenure there. So what was it like dancing for Merce Cunningham at that time? I can um, just tell you my situation going into the company that definitely uh, gave me a certain lens I was looking through. Um, I was mid, probably what I thought would be mid to end of my dance career at that point. Mm -hmm. I finished my graduate degree at University of Washington, really, really wanting to go into education. And um, I had, just finished teaching a course that had a unit on MERS and, you know, I thought I was really up to speed with everything and um, got offered a scholarship to the school after I graduated from Meg Harper and um, went to the school thinking, um, worst comes to worst, uh, I finally get to live in New York City as a dancer and I get to learn this remarkable technique that um, I was so attracted to because I had started dancing late. And for me, anything that um, was more uh, systematic or legible um, in terms of how it was organized really appealed to me because I felt like the entire dance world was so huge. And I was like, well, m maybe there's this one thing I can really focus on. And ballet for me was always gonna be over my head because I didn't learn it young. And I always felt like I was um, pretending as a ballet dancer, you know, my feet were bleeding in ballet point shoes, but I still felt like I didn't have kind of purchase on the history of it and the image and the aesthetic as much. I love the physicality of ballet. When I took a Merce Cunningham class, I felt like, and I've said this before, it was like a Tibetan bell. It was like this, this uh, moment where the energy that was needed for sustaining movement just hit me right in my soul. And I was like, this is the thing that makes me feel most awake, most um, myself, mm. most connected to the, um, the difficulty, but also the, what the, the tran transition that happens when you've really, really gone in deep with something. And so that was pretty quick. So I got to the studio uh, with not a lot of expectations and um, Merce hired me as an in apprentice as soon as he saw me. And um, from there, getting into the company 10 months later, I started doing roles that were really designed for another body, for China Ladazio, who's just like this uh, cat. <laughs> it's a good description. And, 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 heads and feet and just a beautiful serenity to her dancing and I hadn't really found my voice as a dancer at that point I thought I was all adagio and you know a uh, low twitch muscle and immerse started pulling these things out of me which I didn't know were there which were really quick twitch and uh cutting and precise but it took about five years for him to do that like it I went in as one kind of dancer and I think he just started assessing you know, what the edges of maybe myself and everybody, you know, are technically what we're really, really captivated by. Um, 
So learning after five years, I, I feel like I had a big range of things that he had already taught me. Going into learning loose time was a whole other story. Yeah. <laughs> I, you, I mean, just Sarah, you, you experience this too. You're like, okay, well, this is the first step, right? <laughs> <laughs> follow that that experience of just like you know and I had I had toyed with the idea of teaching you exactly how Marcia taught me in terms of the systematic legs first arms head torso right but we didn't have enough time so I taught you in a more holistic version of you know you don't have to you know the body parts yeah you just taught me legs first for two weeks and then uh, we went on a Christmas break. And I, I still remember this. My family visited Brooklyn and I showed them the latest movements that Mercy made for me in front of the Christmas tree. <laughs> so I'm doing like this weird, like Irish jiggy looking dance. And they're like, oh. <laughs> and came back from Christmas break and then he taught the rest of it. Um, and all this, you guys, was in context of not, it was nine. It was the first stuff we had done after 9-11. Mm. There was this feeling like going back to the studio and um, Merce being dogged. Like we didn't miss a minute of creation time. We we were right on it right away. There was one acknowledgement from him when we first came back to the studio when we were allowed to. And the you remember just the smell and the devastation downtown. And he he just looked out the window and he said the view has changed. Mm. And from there, you know, we started doing this piece that I feel ultimately, you know, had this one moment in it for me that was uh, so radical in terms of the internal experience of it. But in the context of the dance, I felt that, you know, there was such beautiful complexity in the group actions that we did and in um, some of the duet work. Um, but I felt that ultimately that piece in the context of 9-11 and I felt like it was almost like a violent mm. and so to do it I felt like I was taking on board the sense of um fissure, like opening myself up in a way that maybe could be painful mm -hmm. and also Sarah you know this once you start it you can't stop it <laughs> like there's no way out <laughs> there's no pauses yeah. You know, the, the way you land something, you deal with as it happens, the score is right. And so I did feel like it was, it was really about that surrender, jumping into it, surrender, and knowing the only way in it, out of it was going to be through it. <laughs> yeah. Does that answer your question? <laughs> well, this is about four of my questions, but that's okay. We can, we can, we can, mean you know, like once you get into it, you can't stop. It's part of the solo, right? So I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go back a little bit here with Sarah because um, you you mentioned you know the time it was like, and I, it you know it, it it was right after 9/11. I hadn't actually um, taken that in, but Sarah, I was looking at your bio and to see where you were in 2002. And I think if I'm right, you were a full-time student at School of American Ballet, um, and you know. Can you share about your dancing life at that time? And you know, Holly went way back and way forward, so you can do the same thing. You can ask <laughs> however you you'd like. Um, yeah, uh, I moved here um, two weeks before 9/11 happened, uh -huh. so that was in 2001, and I was um, in the dormitories at Lincoln Center at School of American Ballet, um, and then September 11th happened, and you know everything changed and um, so yeah, I was at School of American Ballet full time. That was my second year. Um, and then I got my apprenticeship with the company in spring of 2003 and I was 17, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's where I sort of, when I was starting my professional journey at that time mm -hmm. with New York City Ballet. And you know, I had been coming to New York since I was 12 in the summers Mm -hmm. um, I would go to the summer program at SAB. And so I, I was really comfortable with New York and especially the Lincoln Center area, Upper West Side. Like I, I wasn't um, scary to me and I felt like it was my home. And 
you know, I grew up in South Carolina, but that is definitely not my home. That's not um, where I am attached to at all. My family's from the from Jersey and Pittsburgh and everything. So this is this really felt home to me and has been since I moved here. And um, it's really I've connected to it in a way that is strange and complicated. You know, it's like, you know, you, you sometimes hate being here, but then you just can't live without being here. It's very weird, especially during this time now in quarantine. It's like, I just so badly want to get out, but then it's like, no, I need to stay here and keep doing what I'm doing. It's so weird and complicated, but um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I was starting my professional journey at that time, which is kind of amazing to like hear where we both were at that time. And also I love that quote that Merce said that, the view is different. It definitely was everything changed. And you don't, you can't explain what it is. Like you can't really like put into words how it did change. But I think we just all, we got stronger and we had this pain inside of us of what, you know, had happened here. And we used it in a way of like getting to where we wanted to be. And like, I, I remember, cause when I was at SAB, I was definitely in the bottom of the class, like for sure. Like when I got there, I was like, I'm just like writing it out. You know, I, I'd, I'd asked them to stay. I, you know, um, didn't expect to get anywhere. And then I just worked so hard. I worked twice as hard as the person next to me. Cause I couldn't do all the turns. I couldn't do all the jumps. I couldn't get my leg up to my ear. I couldn't like do all that stuff. And I just, I knew I had to prove to them somehow that I was good enough to be here and the second year I was at the school they started seeing me differently and and um I was I was one that would dance I, because I loved it so much and I have this deep passion for dance and I just I breathe it all the time and so I just I think that's what they saw and they um thank god because if I had gone back to South Carolina like that would have been it like I would have stopped dancing like it's so it's, it's, it's sort of crazy how that all happened. Yeah. Amazing. Let me see. So um, we already, well, let's, let's just jump into the solo. So Holly, I, I think I've, I've said this before and I'll, I'll just say it again. This, this loose time is, is one of the more memorable journeys down a diagonal that I have ever witnessed. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost inconceivable that so much can be packed into 90 seconds. Um, so what can you tell us? You told us a little bit already about the process. You told us that Merce started by teaching you the legs, but, and then, you know, then you had Christmas break. So can you <laughs> go on with us about, um, the process of making this solo and also what you had to do to master this solo. Master me. Oh, I think that's the wrong word. <laughs> I threw it in there. I knew you were going to, I knew you were going to, you were going to, um, lean back. <laughs> I'll tell you that the experience of working one-on-one -on -one with Merce mm -hmm. is probably the most in, uh, distinct um, memories I have. Uh, he, he was such a charming creator. And I felt, and I look at it now in retrospect, pedagogically, he was on it. Like in terms of dealing with high strung nervous people mm. like he had a way of talking it down and giving i mean we were learn, learning as fast as possible like in terms of him transmitting information to me and me being able to remember and um doing it in a layered way i think maybe was an advantage then for me also you guys notice everything's frontal mm -hmm. Heck. yeah there's no, there's all centers are equal no points you know in, all points in space can be equal I felt like it it shocked me a little bit because of in the learning process he didn't say now you turn one eighth to the left or you know upstate like it, everything was directly done in front of his desk forward mm -hmm. and you know the head started taking in more three dimensionality but it was very clear it's like this is going to be working from the front and he kept me calm when I when I said, "Is it on releve?" You go, "Oh, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> <awesome to> be. <laughs> he, he and I, I did get to make some choices there. Um, 
after all the movement was learned, then he taught me the time stamp. Then he taught me the score mm. which was on a three. And you know, the Sarah, each, each position has either one count, two counts or three counts. It's kind of like the most jagged waltz idea on the planet, right? And um, it, you've never got to hold the thing that you thought would be easy to hold or the thing that you wanted to, you know, uh, move through, you had to hold. Um, <laughs> At the, at the end of it, I mean, I still remember also feeling really conspicuous. I won't go too far into the interpersonal stuff, but um, at the end of it, those things are so coveted that I felt a, an extreme sense of um, uh, being uh, looked at in a way I didn't want to be, <laughs> you know, because it had been so private for a while. and. Um, and then I felt really conspicuous in the beginning. And I think that uh, that was hard for me interpersonally. Mm -hmm. But um, joy, I would say, is the bottom line for it. Joy and trust from him. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he really dug it. Like, I think he really dug that diagonal. <laughs> and I dug doing it for him, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and yet the first time I did it, I remember counting out, um, there was the, the, Sarah, I wish you could have seen this, the beginning of the, the queuing for that is a cascade of the entire company doing these jetes and pirouettes and curves and coming in from the wings and, and in from upstage. It was like a, like an Esther Williams kind of water ballet happening. And like I had nine, nine sevens or something to count you know, and I'm on the fifth and the sixth and someone says, good luck, Holly. And I'm like, what? And then I go out and then it's like the four counts of silence and stillness. <sighs> you explode, holding it in and then going away. Yeah. That's how it felt. <laughs> okay. That, that's a, that, that is an answer. Okay. So Sarah, it was about two years ago, I think, that I contacted you and asked if you wanted to be one of the 25 dancers who were part of this special performance at BAM. Um, and I remember that we met to talk about it. But at that point in time, what did you know about Merce's work? I mean, I remember, I was thinking about this before we got on here. I remember the exact moment that I got your email <laughs> for this. I was walking in an airport. I don't remember which airport it was, but I arrived some from somewhere and I got your email and I was like, what? <laughs> are they, are they sure? No, they're crazy. Like, no, they don't want like a ballerina in this, do they? Like, I was just like, come on. And then I was like, but I knew from what you said in the email that it was like super important. And like this moment was such a big moment in dance history to be honest and I was like well I'm not gonna say no like I and at that point like I had never seen a Cunningham work in person I had not really studied him obviously I knew about him but um I really like talk about you know starting from the beginning with nothing that's what it was but I just emailed back yes <laughs> I'm not gonna say no to this opportunity but that's dumb so um I immediately uh you know once we worked everything out I immediately just I knew that um if I was going to do this and I was going to do it right I couldn't fake it because I knew that all the other dancers that were going to be involved in this were going to be pretty amazing and I just had to somehow get to their level in some way if I could. I know I wasn't going to get there, but I just knew that I had to try. And so I immediately just started taking Cunningham classes every week. And my good friend, Reed Barmy, who you guys know, he, I remember the first class that I took and I was like, Reed, can you take with me? <laughs> and he met me beforehand and he took me upstairs and he said, okay, let's just go through the, the back exercises. We're just gonna, I don't want you to go in there and I don't, you know, that they don't sometimes explain them. So let's just go through all the exercises so you sort of know what's going on. I was like, okay. So he taught me all the back exercises. And I just, I'll never forget that first class. I was shaking, I was so nervous. And I was just like, oh God, it's gonna be so hard. 
but then I got so addicted to it. I got so addicted to taking class and feeling that moment of strength that I never felt before. And also the fact that I had to, because, you know, you guys, you know, in ballet, like you stand at the bar and you're relying on something from the beginning. But with this, you don't have anything to rely on except yourself. And if you fall over, it's your own fault and you got to get back up and you got to try again and got to keep going. And so it was sort of like a mental and physical sort of thing that happened with me um, the six months leading up to the shows. And, um, you know, we were heavy in New York City Ballet seasons and Nutcracker and all that, but still I would get up and I would go take Cunningham at City Center and then go to my rehearsals at City Ballet. And um, I would Google anything I could online. I would watch videos of just Merce talking. I just wanted to hear him talk about his work and talk about the relationship with him and John Cage and just how they related to each other and how they collaborated. Um, and I would read a lot online about it. And I would talk to Jody Melnick about it. I would talk to Pam Panowitz about it. Mm. So I just, I sort of just dove into it like head first because I, I knew I had to, if I was going to somehow succeed at being part of this. Cause I, I know that, and obviously very quickly I learned, I was like, okay, he's like a genius at what he did. And I just feel so grateful and honored to be somehow part of this. And yeah, it was, it was pretty intense there, but I just, yeah. And I also, <laughs> I went to my trainer Joel Prouty. I was like, Joel, Joel, you have no idea what I have to do in this work. Like, it's terrifying. And I showed him some of the stuff. He was like, all right, we're going to get you there. We're going to get you to do this. You're not going to be scared when you're out there. You're going to be a beast. You're going to be able to stand. You're going to be able to jump and land on one leg. We're going to get you there. And he was, he was really, I, I owe a lot to him because it's a different sort of training that I had to do to not rely on something and really find that like deep, deep strength that I never like dug into before on stage. And I just, I remember in the show, I just couldn't believe that I had done that. It was sort of surreal. I remember it was after the third solo, it was after doubles and I landed most everything and I went off stage, just walked off, and then walked into the back hallway, and I cried because I couldn't believe that I had done it. Like, I could not believe live in front of an audience that I had, it was just unreal to me. And I only had one more thing to do, which was the jumping solo from Summer Space. So I was like, okay, I can be like emotional for that. Like, I don't have to be like reserved, <laughs> but like, I just remember like bawling my eyes out in the hallway because I couldn't believe that I had actually gone up there and done all of that. Yeah. So we're, we're in the performance right now, but I want to take you back now into the studio. So Holly, okay. you're getting ready to, you're, you're preparing to teach Sarah this solo. What did you do to get ready to teach it to her? Well, I did, I fanned out a little bit. I did a little fan <laughs> research on you, Sarah. Because <laughs> I also wanted to know why you were interested, you know? And then I started seeing how incredibly voracious you were, like wanting all these different dance experiences. And, um, I just so was on board with that. I, you know, I felt like, you're kind of like the Meryl Streep of dance. <laughs> Doing all these amazing things. That's the first thing I did is I wanted to know professionally. And then um, getting down to brass tacks for me when I teach this. And, and honestly, I wanted to give you a little heads up on this. Is Merce never allowed me to teach it when he was alive. So I had two opportunities that I promoted to him. And he was like, nope, that's your Tali. Hmm. I always felt a little bit like, you know, I'm kind of being, you know, the, the weighing out the value of the legacy with the value of what his wish was. I felt like in the context we're in now, he would say, go for it, right? Mm -hmm. But in the context when he was alive, I had an injury once. I said, I want to teach it to this person. He said, nope. And then when I was leaving, like, he wouldn't let me teach it to anybody. 
So my process of this is really considering this um, text, if you want to call it that, as um, a primary text that I get to pass forward. I'm a primary source for it, and I need to teach it, and I need to teach it as perfectly as possible for it to continue. Wow. So coming into that room with you, Sarah, and, and seeing your instrument and your intelligence, like right off the bat, I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be heaven. It's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be quick. You know, we only had that one day together, but I just, I was really struck by how lucky a choreographer is to have an exquisite person to work with. Mm. And that is something that I think as a dancer, I didn't quite get until I, until I started staging things, that that value that we give to a choreographer is absolutely integral to anything that's put on that stage, that that choreographer, you know, is, is needing mm. to get the world, right? We're integral to it. So mm. I, that day with you, I just really felt like um, you had, you had done all your homework. My homework was to go back to the dance capsules and make sure I haven't forgotten something. I still can do it in my head and in my sleep, but my body, I, my body doesn't want to do it anymore at all. You know, that we experience like, and then this is when you're like, ah, ah, you know, ah, you fall, then you're not. <laughs> I wasn't quite doing all that with you, but you got it. And, um, so yeah, that was my, my job, Trish, is I was just like, let's make it accurate. Let's, we had to do it quickly, which I think was really, really off the chart absurd, how fast we had to do it. But <laughs> when I saw the performance of you actually manifesting it, I knew it was there, right? That's the question I always ask myself as a dancer and as a teacher or stager, is it in the room? Mm. Can I see it? Is it, is it Cunningham, right? Mm. So easy to slip out of out of what the the aesthetic is and what the demand is. So anyway, that's how I prepare. Yeah. And sir, what was it like for you in the studio there with with Holly? I mean, I was I was a fly on the wall at the time. I was just watching the two of you work. So it was it was fascinating to me to see. But what was it like for you? I mean, you had like prepped me a little bit of like this is going to be a lot. Yeah. It's a lot of steps. It's really fast. And yes, but you hadn't given too much away. So I wasn't like that scared, but I, we, we started in that little room just together, just the two of us without anybody else first. And you like taught me like the first third of it, I think, mm -hmm. because that's all the space we had for. And as soon as you started doing it, I was like, oh no, <laughs> my brain, <laughs> my brain was like, okay all right just Sarah calm down it's gonna be okay you're gonna learn this you're gonna be fine she can show it to you you're not learning it off the tape which is awesome you know you have her right here in front of you just like really just focus and you know go to that place because I I, I I'm very fortunate that in New York City Ballet when I got in I had to learn stuff so fast and um just be ready all the time and knowing exactly what I had to do. So I knew I could sort of um, go into that headspace of, all right, this is literally just learning the steps. You don't have to perform it right now. You do not have to perfect it. You do not have to get out there. You literally just have to put the steps with the counts and then deal with everything later. So that's where I've sort of went into it. And then you did tell me in the beginning, you were like, so this is how he taught it to me, or this is how we showed it. We did, you said the legs first and then the arms, right? Yeah, yeah. so we did, yeah. So you showed me, yeah, you told me that, well, this is how we did it first. You know, I did legs and then went away, and then he gave me the arms later. And, but you're like, but I'm gonna show you, you know, everything together. So everything is, you know, concise and like you can put everything together right away. And, um, I remember by the end of that first hour, the way we had worked and the way we had like a rhythm of like finding the steps and getting it, I knew that it was going to be okay once we like got into the bigger room, but, um, it really, I had never had to, I've never had to, 
don't know if I've put the words right, but like, I've never had to do a different step on different, like on a different count. Like I've never, I've like, I've always had like space and time between things and lingering. Yeah. I've never literally had to do a different step on each count. And I, when I was doing it, I was like, Is my body doing this? Like I, you know, it's like all of a sudden your body like takes over and you don't really know what's happening. And then you just hope to God that you have learned it by the end of that first day because you're doing it, but you don't really know if your mind's going to remember it until you wake up the next day and you get to the studio. <laughs> but I have footage of us because I film like the second half hour rehearsal on my phone. Um, and I just remember... I, I broke down at one point. I don't, we were in the big studio and my brain just like exploded. Mm -hmm. And you just stood there and you're just like, are you okay? Should we go back? <laughs> <laughs> and then they wanted to film it for rehearsal. And I was like, I can't do it alone. I can't, Polly had to do it with me. <laughs> Cause I just needed that like energy. And I remember you're like, okay gonna be okay we can do it together we'll be fine <laughs> so we went from the beginning and we did all of the threes and I think um I remember when I got out there I remember telling myself I was like Sarah do not stop counting you cannot stop counting don't stop counting the threes Holly told you to not stop counting and that I remember is what got me through to the end because I did at one time in rehearsal I stopped counting and I was like I'm done. Can't, can't surrender. I can't keep going. Um, but you did warn me that when you start, it feels like a runaway train and you can't stop it. And I was like, oh, okay. I don't know if I know what that feels like, but okay. And then when I got out there, I didn't feel it in rehearsals for some reason, because in, when we were rehearsing it later on in the theater with everybody, I have to admit that I didn't do it full out any of the rehearsals I was just sort of like finding my boundaries of like okay just like getting my brain to do it over and over again but not like completely full out and when we get on the stage for the tech rehearsals when I really started to try it and um but the, really when I felt the runaway train was in performance like I just got to the middle of it when you just stand there and I was like oh oh my god here we go. I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. And it just, by the end, I was just flailing and like, I went so fast. And I remember, I remember Trish was, I did a rehearsal and you timed it and you were like, that was really fast. You need to slow down. <laughs> well, I'm not saying you could slow down, that you didn't have to. No, but it's because like, I wasn't doing the movements to its fullest because all of a sudden, like, you just like can't stop moving. And so you're like, it's okay. Just, just breathe in the middle of it. Just take your moments, get your leg up, you know, hold your leg up, like do the movements full and take up the space. And then you'll be able to slow yourself down. Like you can do it. But I remember those first couple of times. Oh my God. Like I was like, she is right. She is absolutely right. And I've never felt this in anything I've ever done where you're like, your like body takes over and you literally can't control it. Mm. You just like hope to God that you get to the end. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was crazy. <laughs> so um, we've, Holly, we've got Sarah on the stage doing this. I, I just want to go back in time to when you were on the stage doing this. And just to say, um, I mean, you've, you've, you've talked a, about this a bit already, but I have heard this, solo referred to as your signature solo, which is not, which is not a term that I heard often around the Cunningham universe. Um, and I wonder um, if, for, first of all, if you agree, um, but what it is that distinguishes this from the other things that you danced for Merce? The, the fact that he, gave it to me, that he created it on me, and um, that there was a dialogue there. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, s signature. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, 
my eagerness to teach it to other people when Merce was alive was related to um, knowing the how important um, it was a it was a uh, what would I, it was a container for this. The, it was a metaphor for me. It was a metaphor of what it, it is to dance, literally, in that minute and a half. It took courage. It took um, faith. It took uh, uh, strength. It also took surrender. It took all these things, I think, on a spiritual level. For That's how I approached it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the physicality of it, for me, I felt that Merce had, as I said earlier, tapped into something in my own personal physicality that I didn't realize was there actually. Mm. And I got the strangest comment after the premiere. Someone came up to me who had known me almost my whole life and said, Holly, that's the way you dance. Talking about the solo. And I was like, what? I had always, I mean, I felt like he was taking all these components that were new to me. And this person said, no, when you go out dancing, at a club. <laughs> That's the way you dance. You <laughs> see. So signature, I'll take that part of it that I know Merce was using innately some of my impulses or, or proclivity. Um, and then the, the acceptance of it or the press that happened after um, was very interesting to me. I felt uh, strange about that part of it. And I also felt strange over the fact that the piece as a whole was retired after a year. Yeah. And the piece as a whole had extraordinary moments in it that I, I fear are lost now because of the group effort and how complex some of those phrases were and the scores under them. I just, I worry that they're not gonna be ever done. Um, and also the artwork, the uh, Terry Winter's Vortex Street, mm -hmm. such dramatic, you know, uh, red and black and it looked like, um, it looked like something had blown through you know, a corrugated steel fence. Um, it was a really dramatic, and it ended up being a more of a dark piece, maybe. Um, but I, I'll take the signature part, and as long as I'm a good steward of pu putting it forward into the legacy and our, you know, our continuing body of work as dancers, great. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, maybe I should just address the fact, the reason we're having this conversation right now at this time is, is because of this um, coronavirus pandemic that's got all of us in our homes and has got the theaters dark. And um, this month, later this month, Sarah, you were meant to be doing a week long set of performances at the Joyce, which have been not canceled, but postponed. And you decided among all the other things that you were gonna do from your from your wide repertoire, you decided that you would like to do an arrangement of these solos with six of the other dancers from um, the Brooklyn Academy of Music production. So I'm curious as to why, how this got chosen for your program. Me, I said, I have to do this. I have to do a Cunningham event in my program. Um, you know, it's the whole process of, of learning about Cunningham and, and learning the solos and being out there with a group of artists um, on that stage was so profound to me. Um, one of the most incredible things that will ever happen in my career. And I, and like Holly just said, you know, doing that solo. And I remember us talking about like the order of like the solos of, you know, how would we like to order this? And I was like, you know, I just want to go out there with a bang first and like do this solo and it like breaks the wall down for me because I, it does take so much bravery to get through that solo and just, sur and surrender. Like you just have to surrender. And I remember before I walked out there and you have that moment of like, oh gosh, this is about to happen. And the counts are getting there and the moment's coming and then you just like walk out and you just, you have to wait those silent four counts. And it just seems like forever. And I knew if I could get past that moment and get through that solo, that I could get through anything. Mm -hmm. And I just felt so powerful after that solo finishing and walking off. I was like, 
I'm good. Like, I'm good to go. Like, bring it on. You know, like, I just, <laughs> it was like, this such, like, it just empowered me in a way that I never, ever, ever felt before. And um, just knowing that only a few people have done it and that, like, having the experience with Holly, it was just like, I just, I can't even put into words what all of it means to me. So I just needed to keep that going and I needed and I wanted to experience it again in some way and I also wanted to experience it with some of the dancers that I danced with in the centennial because I just was so in awe of all of them and we I remember nobody didn't watch like we were all backstage watching each other the entire time and it's it was so incredible just to see all these other people diving into it just like I was and it was sort of an unknown world for a lot of us, even though they were more exposed to it than I had been. It just like, we were all in the same boat of like, oh gosh, here it is. Are we gonna be able to do this? Are we gonna get through this? Are we get, but it was, and I just, I, I want to have that feeling again with a lot of the colleagues that I was with and you know, who I respect a lot. And um, yeah, it was, it was a definite, like when I had the meeting with the Joyce, I was like, yep, that this is, this has to happen on the program. Like there's no other choice, like this is gonna happen. And um, yeah, and I've also like, you know, there's been other little events that have been happening and I just always wanted to, you know, part of that, like I was part of a Dylan, Dylan Crossman did an event in Toronto and um, it was funny, I went out there and he was like, I, you definitely have to do loose time. I was like, oh, okay, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it for you, yeah. And I, went out there and I stood there longer than four seconds <laughs> and Dylan, I saw him watching and he was like I didn't think you were gonna start like <laughs> he like almost was like and go yeah. <laughs> but um yeah I just like the, the the feeling that I get after doing something like that I just you get so addicted to it you get addicted to that feeling and I always want that mm -hmm. so we'll get to do it you know when we do it right. we'll do it six seven times in a row it, so it's gonna right. be yeah. it's gonna be great you know when when um when gene and i arranged the event you know we had 25 people they had approximately four solos each um and i one of the ideas I had was that everybody would do one solo before anybody did a second solo. That was one I made a rule. And it was kind of like, I was gonna just, you know, and I thought, and it was very deliberate. It, it, I said, what would be the best first thing for each person to do of their solos? Like what would get them, out? cause it was only, it was a one-time event. Like what would get them out there on the stage and make the, the, the night work for them? That was kind of my, my thinking and, um, and I, I asked you, I asked you, I said, would, you know, do you want to do that one first? And I, cause I, I wanted to make sure that it was, you know, sometimes people like to be, to be it. Anyway, I gave you that choice. And so then I thought, okay, so there's Sarah, she's doing that solo. It can't look just like what Holly did where she was all alone on the stage. It, it, that's not going to work. And so I put Shalvar downstage in the corner doing the nearly 90 solo of Rashan's that moved up the diagonal. So they were just doing, and I, I remember I had, the, um, I had all the little iPhone videos on my computer and I was looking, I was gonna say, Is, will this work? I mean, can they get by each other? You know, how, how long, you know, when does Sarah have to start to it make? But it was so fun to watch those two diagonals um, occupy the space together there was a kind of um I, was it was a little it was a little uh, it was a joyful moment for me to see that well it also comforted me as well because i wasn't like just out there alone and just having a i didn't know what he was like i wasn't really paying attention to what he was doing but just having a presence and an energy out there helped me and then i remember um he did not he didn't know what i was doing behind him because most of the time i was behind him doing the diagonal and he was up here. And um, he at one point saw and he was like, that's what you're doing behind me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm like going crazy back here. 
<laughs> he's like doing this slow thing and he was like I had no idea I was like mm-hmm that's right you gotta get out of my way <laughs> I'm coming for you <laughs> it was a nice moment it was well, we've talked for a while, um, and I, um, I don't really have anything else in particular that I want to um, ask, but if, if there's anything else either of you would like to add about the solo, Mercy's work, your experience working together, um, just open it out. Um, I don't know. Is there anything that we missed, Holly? I can't remember. Just keep carrying the torch. <laughs> That's what I feel like out there when I'm like, I'm holding like the Olympic torch and I'm like, ah! <laughs> and by the end, when you get the leg up at the end, you've like, you've like lit the Olympic torch <laughs> at the end, you know, and the fire just goes, boom. <laughs> That's what I feel like. I mean, it is just, and also what you said about, um, or I guess what they said about like, that's how you dance. Like that solo is you. I when I was really doing it in the performance and I just let it all go. And I did, you know, I had moments of like, well, you're not going to get to do it again. So just go for it, like fall over, like almost fall over. And I, I don't get to do that a lot. You know, I don't really just get to like, just go for it like that. And I just, I really felt like when I was done with that, I was like, that felt like me, that was me. You know, and I just like, it's really, really special because, and even though I didn't have point shoes on or, you know, it's like I was not in my normal state, but like, it was me. Mm. And I just, I just, that's also why, like, I want to keep doing it in some place because it's, I, I'm so addicted to that, to that feeling. Mm. So thank you, Holly. It's all because of you yeah. that this exists. Yeah. Yeah. It was a it was a huge pleasure to watch. I mean, to watch both of you perform the solo, but also to watch the two of you work together was a huge pleasure. Um, it felt like a it felt like the right it felt like a good match, <laughs> and I was really really happy. Um, Holly was so patient with me. That's all I remember because I would just like keep forgetting by the end, and you're just like, it's okay. You just want to get want to go back to this part, you know? It was just, <laughs> you were so patient with me. <laughs> I knew how I I knew what you. Were and I also know that you know, my method was always as soon as Merce would teach me something, you know, we'd have our two or three hours, and then I'd run to the other studio, put it in a new context, and that was how I would input it into my long-term memory. And, uh -huh. and I was so thrilled with the fact that you filmed it. I was mm -hmm. like, no, that's the dancer of the future. You know, she's taking responsibility for what this process is, using mm -hmm. all of resources. So I, I, you rock my world. Thank you, Sarah. It was so great to be with you. And I'm so glad you get to continue doing this and all the other things that you're doing. And you're taking good care of yourself. I've read about that too. I'm crying. I mean, I'm taking Cunningham. I like take it every day at, well, most every day at one o'clock on Instagram Live. I do the Cunningham warm ups. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we'll stop there. That's a good place to stop, right there. Taking <laughs> class every day. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had class for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.